So, I'm going to do the key hat off my case study. Um, so, for the, my presentation, I'm going to talk about first, I'm going to have a description of how the hat off came about, talk about the natural features that occur um, in the bikini hat off. Uh, then, we're going to have a little look at the history, um, which is quite interesting actually. Um, so, we'll be able to get on that in a little bit. Then, we'll get to the threats, so like the global uh, implications and trends that are affecting the bikini hat off. And then we'll move on to the management of Bikini Atoll and um, what's been put in place to help try and protect the area. So yeah, so the Marshall Islands. So the Marshall Islands are just off the, well not just off the coast, but they're uh, northeast of Australia. Um, Bikini's up here, right in the northern end of the, the Marshall Islands. Um, so Bikini Atoll. Bikini Atoll is a large coral atoll. Um, consists of 23 islands and comprising of nearly 182 kilometres squared of coral reefs. Um, it usually takes for a coral atoll to form about 30 million years, so it's quite a long process for it to happen. Um, so we'll have a little look at how a uh, formation of an atoll actually occurs. So we've got the first stage where coral polyps begin to settle on oceanic islands. Um, this forms a fringing reef around the islands, usually volcanic islands. Um, then the second stage is that the island slowly starts to subside at slow, uh, and if it's at a slow enough rate, the corals can grow upwards and outwards, forming a barrier reef, which is the second picture there. Uh, and then the third stage is that the island completely subsides so that it's submerged by water. Um, it's left with a small ring of islands with coral forming an atoll reef. So the natural features that can be found at Bikini Atoll. Um, Many of the reefs surrounding bikini atolls are narrow and have spur over reef developments. So this means that a lot of it is actually protected because the, the corals go up and down. This is a picture from actually from Florida, because I couldn't find a bikini atoll. But ooh, you can see where the corals are actually growing. Because of the ridges, it like, reduces the amount of wave impact that comes onto the beaches. So it's got a bit of protection there um, from wave action. Um, the lagoon itself in the middle of the atoll reaches 243 square miles and has an average depth of 46 metres deep. So it's not massively deep, but it's quite a large area. So the history of the Bikini Atoll. Um, in 1954, Wales did a study on the coral, coral species that could be found in the Bikini Atoll, which had, had quite an extensive list. I read the list, it's really long. I think there's yeah, 127 species, 23 which he's found himself. Um, but then between 1946 and 1958, so I think Wells, he released his study in 1954, but it was actually done prior to this. But um, in 1946, the people, in, uh, the people from Bikini, or the Bikini people, were evacuated from their homeland and replaced by 42,000 US soldiers. This allowed the US military to conduct a series of nuclear tests um, on the surrounding areas. Um, a few of them were on Bikini at all, but more of them were done on the other islands. Um, over this pe period, five cr uh, craters were made in, um, in Bikini Atoll, with the biggest being the Bravo Crater, which is 73 metres deep. This was created by one of the first ever thermonuclear tests called Castle Bravo, which is actually one of the first hydrogen bombs ever to be tested in the world. Um, this caused an absolute uproar for the public um, due to fallout, which is when uh, when an explosion happens, the radioactive ash starts to fall, uh, and obviously this can cause, because of the radioactive, the uh, it can really cause problems with a lot of things, including the wildlife, and also there was 23 Japanese fishermen who were severely ill after being exposed to the fallout. Um, so as you can tell, a lot of people weren't happy with that. Um, by 1958, all the nuclear testing had finished, um, and by the 1970s, the Bikini and people were allowed to go back to their homeland. But unfortunately, after a few a few years, they had to be re-evacuated due to their bodies containing to their, they had uh, unacceptably high levels of radiation in their body, so they had to get removed again. And I don't think till today they still haven't been actually taken back to their island because it's still too radioactive for them to get back there. Um, in 2008, Richards uh, Richards et al. carried out a comparative study of Wells Wells in a study from 19 well from before 1954. Um, but um, it compared the species that were found before and after the disruption caused by the nuclear testing, and it found that the, there was 80 new species, and out of the 127, 84 were still there. So it hasn't caused a massive 
obviously that's nearly 50, 50 odd species that have been have disappeared. But um, in, in the whole retrospect of things, considering there's 84 that have come back, it's shown that it's quite a good, um, the coral has been able to come back quite efficiently and quite quickly. Uh, uh, this is quite an eerie fo uh, video that I found of Castle Bravo. It just shows how massive the explosion was. Um, the sound doesn't help, it's quite eerie. But um, so yeah, it's quite a massive explosion and that was in the ocean. Uh, they actually destroyed three of the islands that were part of Bikini Atoll. So they originally there was 26, but now there's only 23. Um, a, a ma another major thing that happened with this is obviously because of the eruption, a lot of uh, the, the sat like the grain size proportionally became a lot smaller. So again, that could probably that could possibly be a why that uh, that those 50 species couldn't come back because the grain size was smaller. So yeah, it's quite a massive explosion. Um, so yeah, so going on to the threats of Bikini Atoll. We're looking at direct anthropo uh, anthropogenic threats of, uh, on the corals, uh, looking at things like pollution and tourism. Uh, in, the northern, in the Northern Marshall Islands, it's pretty much non-existent prior to 2005. This is probably due to the radioactive, uh, the radioactive um, fallout still being present. So a lot of people aren't allowed to go to the island and probably are scared to go to the island. Um, no coral bleaching has occurred in these regions and neither has the rise of the crown of fallen starfish, which obviously we all know has a devastating effect on coral reefs, um, but they cannot be found in this area, so they haven't really been an issue. Um, other direct impacts on Bikini At uh, Atoll would be over-harvesting and overfishing, but on the other hand, there are some global trends and implications that could affect Bikini Atoll. So these things, because obviously they are a low-lying low -lying island, sea level rise, is a massive uh, impact that can happen to the Bikini Atoll. They're not very high islands, um, so they can just end up being completely submerged. Um, the sea temperature rise as well, uh, we know that the sea temperature rise is affecting coral reefs, and Wilkinson in 1993 made a prediction that 70% of the world's coral reefs may be lost in the next 40 years if the current trends carry on. Um, also acidification, so this is where pH levels in the sea are becoming too low for the, um, for the coral, since they have an outer skeleton, uh, it can cause physiological stress to the animals. So, management of Bikini Atoll. Uh, in 2010, Bikini Atoll was the first of the Marshall Islands to be named World Heritage Site uh, by UNESCO. This is because of the cultural history that they have there, as well as the uh, biodiversity and the biological features that they have there. Um, they were, so yeah, so that was UNESCO, that's what it stands for, United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. On the 21st of January in 2010, they released the Conservation Management Plan, which had two clear goals, um, which um, I'll go into more detail in a little bit. Uh, so yeah, the overarching like statement that they made uh, for Bikini Atoll was to identify, protect, conserve, preserve and transmit the cultural heritage values of Bikini of Bikini in relation to the World Heritage listing. So that's more of the cultural history side. Uh, and whereas the second point is to more to protect the biodiversity of Bikini Atoll because it has such a high biodiversity of corals there. Um, so yeah, that's what I've just said there. So this is quite a clear management strategy that they have um, so you've got the four there, which are the cultural heritage and then the biological. So if we have a little bit, if we look a bit more into the biological objectives of the management plan, it's talks about the direct anthropogenic, uh, anthropogenic threats like overharvesting and illegal fishing. This management uh, strategy is tried to avoid uh, direct impacts uh, by having a restriction on recreation and tourism. Um, so I think you have to get a permit to, by the government. Uh, just to even visit the island, so um, it's quite hard to get to the island. I mean, a lot of people go diving there because of the pristine reefs, um, but again, you have to get any permission to do anything to even go to the island. Um, so yeah, another strategy that's been put in place is that they are, they are allowing a certain amount of fishing to be done there, but only if they abide by the vessel monitoring system, which allows the government to actually monitor where they're going, how long they're staying, like, within 12 nautical miles of the, of the island. Um, 
The Strategy 6 states that due to rare events, scientific research is allowed to be conducted. Again, it would have to be, you'd have to get a permit to do the scientific research. Um, but because it's such a, a rare event of where the, the explosions happened and the coral reefs are rebuilding, it's quite good for scientific research. Um, so this is, again, backed up because it needs prior permissions by the government body. So in conclusion, um, with current legislation and management practices that are in place to protect uh, the cultural heritage of biodiversity of Bikini, uh, Bikini Island, uh, the coral reefs are protected from ma uh, a manner of things such as overfishing, alongside other global trends such as pollution due to the rules and restrictions on the people allowed to visit the islands. Uh, when comparing the biodiversity of coral before and after the devastating effects of the nuclear tests carried out by the US, the abundance and diversity of species I would say is of least concern because of the, the massive amount of regrowth that's ha happened after the short period of time. So yeah, like I said, like since the study by Richards, it's shown that the numbers have increased even after the events. So it's not, I would say it's not a massive problem for the biodiversity, apart from the overfishing. Any questions? <laughs> Charlie, good. Um, so, the way to protect a coral reef is to make it radioactive. Well, that's what it seems like. Because um, <laughs> it's... There's not a lot of studies, there's been a lot of studies on the history, and it talks about the history, but there's not a lot done on whether the radioactive affects the uh, coral growth. I was trying to find some studies and it was quite hard. I don't know, I don't know if it's going to try and encourage people to like blow things up to, to try and get things to regrow, but it seems to that, that it seems that that has worked. So well, actually, that's the secret to keeping a coral reef pristine is to keep people away from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is precisely what blowing it up managed to do. Yeah. yeah. So obviously, because of the radiation levels, a lot of people one aren't allowed there, and two probably tend not to go there because if you hear, oh, that's high in radiation levels, I personally would think no, I don't really want to go there. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that's is probably it, what people think. Presumably, it's then safe to fish. Well, because they studied the fish, what they're taking out and what they're. What I they're don't taking. know actually. That, I, I haven't seen. Free eyes or? <laughs> well, I don't think there's been any with free eyes specifically, but there. <laughs> I haven't actually. I didn't. To be fair, I didn't look into what the effects of the fish would be um, of the radiation. I don't know if that's. Well, I guess they must be. Maybe they're just huge fish. Maybe that's what they like to fish there. Maybe. Not sure. Cool. Lovely. Uh, any other questions? Thank you very much.